So oh, it's been a while since I've done one of these, um, I suppose, video tutorials um, about the use of Lightroom. And uh, one of the questions I often get asked by, uh, by photographers is um, kind of understanding how you do high dynamic range um, images um, in Lightroom. Um, if you don't know what high dynamic range images are, basically what happens is if you're, um, if you're confronted by a scene that you want to photograph, but uh, it's a high contrast scene. In other words, parts of the scene are very bright and other parts of the scene are in very deep shadow. Um, you're going to find it difficult for your camera to capture the tonal range from the detail in the brightest parts to the detail in the darkest parts of the image in a single frame. So here is an example of um, a high contrast image. We're looking at a mountain stream near the village of Ha in Bhutan and the sun's risen behind me and it's lit the mountains and the sky uh, in the distance. But it's not high enough yet to light the foreground where the stream is running through. So if I were to take an exposure a single frame exposure of this scene, this is basically what the camera produces. Because the bulk of the scene is in shadow, the camera obviously weighs the exposure towards trying to retain some detail in the shadow, which then leaves the, um, the background, which is lit by the rising sun, a little blown out in that sense there. And you will usually recognize a, um, a high contrast scene simply because you will see your histogram when you preview your image on the LCD of your camera and you look at the histogram, you'll see that your histogram looks, looks something like this, where you've got a, a peak in the darker part of the histogram on the a, on a left-hand side, then you've got not much detail in the middle and then a peak on the right-hand side. So basically what I call this is a wide valley in between two mountain peaks. So, if your histogram has a wide valley in between two mountain peaks, then basically you are confronted with a high contrast scene that your camera isn't able to capture exposure-wise in a single frame. So what happens? Well, what you need to do basically is get your camera to capture a number of frames at different exposure values. So a number of frames will gradually reveal the exposure in the foreground where the shadows lie. And then a number of frames will reveal the exposure in the background, which is the brighter part of the picture. Now, let's have a look at the settings I used to take this photograph. So the good thing about Lightroom is it'll actually show you the exit data. So I shot this with my Fujifilm X-T3 with a 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 lens. So the ISO is 160. That's the lowest natural ISO I can get on the X-T3. On your camera, that might be lower. It might be 100 or it might be higher. It might be 200, depending on what it is uh, that you're using um, in terms of your camera. I shot this at 16 millimeters, so wide enough to get most of the scene and the stream in it at f11. And I had filters on, um, basically, this is a five second exposure um, to get this scene here. Now, obviously I've lost detail in the brights at the back. And whilst I can see most of the detail in the foreground, some of it's actually lost as well. So I can't, I can't see, for example, what's in the shadows underneath the rocks here or the detail in the, the shrubs and the scrub just over here. So what I then do basically is set my camera to bracket. now. On most cameras, DSLRs and mirrorless, you can actually set it so that it does what we call auto exposure bracketing, AEB. Now in auto exposure bracketing, you can basically tell your camera to take a certain number of frames at different stages of underexposure and a certain number of frames at different stages of overexposure. What I normally do is I set my camera to take five frames at um, one stop difference underexposed and then one stop difference overexposed. So this is the frame that the, kept, uh, the camera would have normally captured anyway. Then here is, um, the next image here is um, an image uh, that the camera has captured that is two stops overexposed. So if you look at the data up here, 
it now says that this is a 20 second exposure. So basically, we're capturing four times more light than in the first frame. And what this has done is revealed the detail in the foreground uh, to quite a, a great degree, but completely blown out the detail in the background. Then the third frame is taken at 10 seconds exposure. So again, we get a detail in the foreground and some in the background, but we're not too worried in the back, about the background because this, these two frames, the 20 second exposure and the 10 second exposure is really about revealing the detail in the foreground. And then what happens is the camera will then take a picture that is at um, two and a half seconds exposure, so a much faster shutter speed. And as you can see, this is really about capturing the exposure detail in the lit background. And we have a lot of shadows in the foreground. And then the last frame taken um, using auto exposure bracketing is, once this is finished um, loading, is at 1.3 seconds. So again, we have a lot of detail now visible in the peaks in the background, but hardly any detail available in the foreground. So basically, we have got five frames. The first one is taken at um, five seconds exposure. The next one's taken at 20 seconds exposure. The next one's taken at 10 seconds exposure. The other one's at two and a half seconds. And then the last one is at 1.3 seconds exposure. Now across these five frames, we now have detail that ranges from what we can see in the shadows to what we can see in the highlights. So Lightroom actually has a photo merge function available that allows you to merge the exposures across all of these five frames into a single exposure. So what you've got to do basically is load up your five um, bracketed frames into Lightroom. You then select all of them there and then you basically can do a right click on it, select photo merge and then select, oop, select HDR. And what Lightroom then presents you is a dialog box that shows you um, what you can do in terms of uh, merging the five different exposures into a high dynamic range image. Now, it takes a while doing this, depending on, again, your file size and um, the capacity of your computer. So what I normally do here is um, just go make myself a cup of tea, or if it's in the evening, maybe a glass of red wine. But I'm recording this at 9.30 a.m. So no red wine for this little black duck for the time being. Now, you'll probably notice at this point in time that you've got a number of, ah, here it is, it's just loaded all five exposures. It's done a pretty good job. You'll notice there are two check boxes up here, auto align and auto settings. I actually have them both checked. Um, auto align simply means that if there is any variation uh, in the alignment of the elements across the five images, that Lightroom will automatically align them so that they merge seamlessly. You're not going to get ghosting effects and things like that. And auto setting simply means that Lightroom automatically kind of puts in what it thinks is the optimum um, um, settings, I suppose, the optimum um, details, the uh, exposure, the highlights, the shadows, and so on, to try and balance the exposure across the frame. You can tweak this um, quite substantially after you've actually finished with the HDR merging process. So we'll just leave that there for the time being. You then have what we call a deghost amount there. And basically what happens is if, you've, if you're shooting a scene across, say, five different exposure, bracketed scene, um, exposure brackets, you might have elements in the scene that move. Say, for example, if there are people in the scene or there are vehicles or animals, you'll find that as you take each of those five frames, that person or that animal um, will occupy a different space within each of those frames. So the ghosting simply removes any of those ghost images of the person or the animal in the frame. What I normally do is I'm just doing a landscape or a cityscape is I leave it at medium, um, which means that any kind of ghosting will just have a medium level of deghosting applied onto it. Um, I usually leave the ghost, the ghost overlay off. If you select this particular checkbox, then it will basically show you the layers it went through and, and basically identify those areas where it basically did the deghosting on it. And then basically what I then do is uh, select create stack. You, you can choose not to do a create stack. What create stack simply does is that it takes all those five um, raw files, the so five images there, and then it creates 
the sixth image, which is basically a compilation or a merge of the exposure values across those five files. And rather than basically showing you six separate images in Lightroom, it stacks it all into one. And then basically it goes on and creates um, a stack there. So I'm just going to merge this down. And so Lightroom now is creating the HDR for this image. Again, it'll just take a bit of time. So good time to just grab a biscuit, do a, uh, a Tim Tam slam dunk or something along the lines of that. Um, go ahead and catch a brief glimpse at your latest flick on Netflix. Ah, here we go. And here it is. So this is the, the actual image that uh, Lightroom has basically merged across the uh, um, the five exposure values that you've got. Now the thing you'll notice here straight away because we selected the kind of auto setting there It's gone in and it's implemented what it believes are the optimum um, Exposure contrast highlight shadow settings and so on to give you what it thinks is a balanced exposure now clearly you can actually play around with this and adjust this and and, and edit it for example you can introduce more shadow to reveal more of the foreground pump up more exposure to get more foreground, drop your highlights down, drop your whites down a little bit more. You can then play around with filters um, to kind of locally adjust for different parts of the scene. You can add contrast, you can dehaze a little bit more if you want to kind of make things pop out, bring up a bit more mid-tone contrast by adding clarity into the image. That's entirely up to you. Um, what I normally do um, when I'm, I suppose, editing or processing a landscape image is I'm looking at how I want um, the viewer or the viewer's gaze to enter the scene and how I want to guide the viewer's gaze into the rest of the scene. So compositionally, when I shot this scene, I was actually using um, the stream as a bit of an S-curve leading line to take our gaze in the, into the, uh, the frame. So they are particular, I guess they call them stepping stones or resting points where the gaze goes through. So the gaze might land on um, this bit of um, long exposure water travel around the rocks, the bright bush here along the edge of it until it moves into the mountain. So I'm, I'm guided by how I want the viewer's gaze to enter the scene in the way in which I've edited the image. So as an example, here is a, a finished copy of the, uh, the blended high dynamic range image, which I've then edited before. So you can see there's a little bit of a change from what I've done uh, in regards to this image as opposed to what the um, Lightroom had kind of blended together originally. So what I've done is I've actually pulled in a radial filter just to kind of slightly darken the top of the image there. And what I've also done is just played around with some of the actual values and the sliders here a little bit more just to get things popping up just a little bit more. So you'll notice, for example, I've actually just um, increased a little bit of vibrance down this end here. I have uh, added a bit of contrast, dropped the highlights, increased the shadows, popped out the whites a bit more just to get uh, get it popping up a bit more strongly and just drop the blacks just a little bit more. I'll probably play with this image um, more substantially as well, just to kind of um, guide the eye into it. And I might crop it a little bit differently. Um, so what I might do is, um, at some point, perhaps share the final image with you on social media, on Facebook or Instagram. So you might want to just follow me on, uh, on either of those social media platforms to see what the final image might be like. But that's basically it. So when you're confronted with a high contrast scene and your camera sensor isn't able to capture the tonal range across that scene, then what you can then do is bracket it and then using a fairly simple tool like Lightroom's um, HDR Merge, um, bring all the exposures together to give you a bit more leeway when you're actually um, editing the actual image itself. Now, there is um, an interesting thing I wanted to actually show you in regards to, um, to this. So you'll notice, for example, if I were to go to the original image taken, if I were to play around with my exposure sliders, you'll notice I can go all the way to minus five and all the way to plus five. So I can adjust the exposure range from minus five to plus five. But in the finished HDR image, you'll notice that my exposure range has now increased because of the merged exposure 
um, frames. I can go all the way to minus 10 now and all the way to plus 10. So what you do when you merge your exposures is that you have a greater range of tones, I guess, to adjust and play with. Now, this is just one way in which you actually blend exposures. Um, there are other ways of doing it. You might want to do it more manually if you understand the whole notion of layers and luminosity masking in Photoshop. It gives you greater control over how you are um, adjusting for and manipulating exposures within um, your image, but that is a tale for another time. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it's actually been useful for you. And um, if you're ever out there and you're photographing, say, a sunset scene or a, a high contrast scene where you've got a beautiful foreground but it's in shadow, a wonderful background but it's in bright light, you know what to do there. Okay, so that's it uh, from me for now. Um, take care, stay um, healthy and stay well in these interesting times. And I'll catch you in the next um, recording video. All right, see ya.